Are we ready for the jury? Yes, okay, yes, great. All right, thank you. Be seated. All right, your next question. Thank you. Um, Mr. Depp, I'd like to show you a document that's been marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit 146, and I believe this was entered into evidence previously. So if we could publish it to the jury as well, please. Mr. Depp, could you please explain to the jury what's reflected in this photograph? Um, I believe that's, uh, well, it's definitely me. Um, uh, after uh, receiving a, kind of a, 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 a roundhouse um, punch um, from Miss Hurd. I believe that this is uh, it's March. Uh, I believe that this is from w w what's been called a staircase incident. Am I correct? Am I right? So is, do you, you said you think this is from March of 2015? Um, I'm just looking at the top. Okay. Okay. Do you remember who took this photograph? Uh, Mr. Bett, Sean Bett. And relative to when you had injured your finger, when was this photograph taken? Sorry? Relative to when you had injured your finger in Australia, when was this photograph taken? Uh, the, the injury to my finger was sustained uh, uh, I believe it was a couple of weeks or so before this because I was we were back in <clears throat> Los Angeles for the surgery and rehabilitation of the uh, digit so I know you can't see your hand in this photograph but what was what would your hand have been like given its injury at this date um, well it, it was it was still a very, um, it was a very fresh wound um, when that amount of um, when the tip of your, when your finger is uh, severed, um, that's not going to heal up for a very long time and uh, so my finger was still, it was still a very fresh wound. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure that, that uh, the, the, this might have been around the time of the pin, in, uh, the, the pin that was, uh, that was uh, put into my finger to keep it together, I guess. And what type of cast would you have had on at this time? It, it, it wasn't a cast per se, as it was. A, it was. A, it was bandaging. Um, 
uh, when the when the when the bandage was out to sort of here, um, that was extra padding for the uh, for the tip of the finger uh, protection and and also because of the the, the pin that was in there. Um, so, as I'd said before, there were there were when D Nurse Debbie would ask, you know, give me, you know, on, on a scale of one to ten, your pain. Uh, when the fingers started to feel differently and hurt a lot more, and it became like a 12 out of 10 pain, uh, that, that, that was... Uh, uh, Yes, that was right around then, and, and the reason for that was because of the the infection. The MRSA had already uh, been um, working its way for a number of days. Mr. Depp, could you please explain to the jury the circumstances that led to you having um, the bruise that's reflected in this photograph? There... Again, there was another confrontation, another another confrontation, another argument about something or other, and we were uh, we were in we were in, in um, penthouse five area, which was where. Uh, Ms. Hurd had her office at the top of the stairs. And so the, the stairs came down, and then there was a, a, a landing, and then another set of stairs went down the opposite direction. Uh, and uh, this took place on the landing um, where she was uh, coming out, you know, trying to... Uh, trying to get to me, trying to hit me, trying to do anything she could. And um, and then Whitney, her sister, was there, who <clears throat> who stepped in the way. And uh, interesting thing that was, was that inter what was interesting was that now is that Whitney stepped in front of Amber and was facing Amber to stop Amber. And uh, and uh, when she was in between us, Amber snuck in the. She reached, got the roundhouse in, and and uh, just nailed me on the on the cheekbone. Do you call, recall what Miss Heard was upset about at this time? I do not. I really don't. And was anyone else in the uh, pen, in Penthouse Five with you and Whitney and Miss Heard? Um, by that time, Mr. McGivern had been called. I believe that um, um, actually Debbie, as I remember, Debbie Lloyd was at the front door of Penthouse Five, standing by the door. Mr. McGivern was kind of at the bottom of the last uh, group of stairs. And uh, and then the thump happened, and um, I got myself out of there, out of the situation, and I walked down the stairs to Mr. McGivern just to say, let's, let's get out of here, you know. Um, and I, I remember that something was thrown from up there. I don't recall what it was, but something was uh, thrown at me. I, it, was, it seemed like it was like a, I don't know if it was a, a, a bag of, like, pens or, 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 but it was, it was from her. 
office area. <clears throat> If we could please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 343. And for the record, this is an audio recording. And we, it's um, quite lengthy, so we intend to play certain portions of it. Okay. Any objection? No objection other than we'd just like to know what minute, second portion they're going to play. Okay, but the entire audio is... In evidence, correct? Yes, sir. And no yes, objection? Sir. Okay. All right. And 343 in evidence. If you'd like me to read the specific minutes now, or we can provide it to counsel afterwards. If you want it now, or as you go. Or, okay. Thank you. Uh, we intend to play minute 25, 37 seconds through 26, 28. Um, one hour and 57 minutes, 21 seconds through one hour, 58 minutes, 54 seconds. Uh, two hours, 38 minutes, 52 seconds through, excuse me, two hours, 38, 52 seconds through two hours, 39 uh, minutes, 43 seconds. And then two hours, 46 minutes, one second through two hours, 47 minutes, 20 seconds. Those are four clips. Okay. Thank you. Do you want to publish that to the jury? I did. It's just audio. Okay. That's that's the promise you gave me a little while ago. I'm I'm telling you, if you if you lost memory last night of kicking me out the door with the fucker hitting me, again, and you sorry. Mi and your memory is gone from uh, you kicking the the bathroom door and, and hitting me in the skull as again, I was bent down. I am Wait, sorry. if you have those memory. Uh, 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 fucking, you know, di divots. I was upset. There was a lot yeah. going on, okay. and I was well, in, on an ambient. Okay. Like, why well, like, Why are you obsessing over the fact that I can't remember it the way you remembered it? I said I was sorry. Okay. I didn't deny I know it. That. I'm not talking about that. What I want. It's, it's, it's not to get you mad, it's not to get, it's just to get out of a bad situation while it's happening before it gets worse. In Australia, when we had the big fight where I lost the tip of my finger, at least five bathrooms and two bedrooms I went to. Two, two. To avoid talking to me, to, to avoid working me out. That's to escape the, the fight. You don't escape the fight. You escape the solution. No. You escape the solution. No. You s escape figuring it out. We cannot work it out if you run away to the bathroom every time. Listen to me. Listen to me. A boxer can't go 12 rounds without a fucking minute break. I'm not, not giving you a minute break. You do it at minute three at the beginning of an argument. No. There are rounds, man. And when it gets too fucking hairy, the ref splits them apart or whatever. But I'm, I'm, all I'm saying is you, 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 you can't have a solution if the argument just keeps mounting and mounting and mounting and mounting. I fucking go to the, into the bathroom and sit on the floor. Bam, bam, bam. Here you come. I come out. Fight, fight, fight. Crazy. Escalated. I go, I split again, I go to another fucking bathroom or a bedroom or something. Knock, 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 bang, bang, bang. You kept coming to get me.
not the one who fucking throws fucking pots and that's different. That's different. That's different. That's one does not <laughs> negate the other. That's irrelevant. It's a complete non sequitur. Just because I've thrown pots and pans does not mean that you Very come and knock on the door. Like just because there are vases does not mean that you come and knock on the door. Really, I should just let you throw. I'm not saying that. You're saying that. You're putting words in my mouth and then making no, non sequitur. I'm giving you a situation. No, you're trying to justify how you don't or do come to the door no, based I'm on whether I throw pots and pans. It's irrelevant. No, I'm justifying how you. you, you, you seem to think that there's this cowardice in me that runs away and I don't fight for you. And you're justifying that by saying I throw pots and pans? Okay, cool. Let's no, talk about everything you do wrong. I'm not the one who... I said to Travis, I said, no, I said to you, hey, tell Travis what just happened. You oh, you tell told him. me to do it. You yeah. told me to. You said, go do that. I said, no, tell, tell him what just happened. And I lied. And that you punched me in You're the right. fucking thing. And you, you figured it out. And you said, no, fuck it. No, I didn't. What the fuck are you talking about? And I, I watched punch you lie. And then I, I didn't punch you, by the way. You, I'm sorry that I didn't uh, you uh, hit you across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. You, you know, you've been in a lot of fights. You've been around a long time. I don't know. Yeah. No, I, when you fucking have a close You face. didn't get punched. You got hit. I'm sorry I hit you like this, but I did not punch you. I did not fucking deck you. I fucking was hitting you. I don't know what the motion of my actual hand was, but you're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. How are you? How, what am I supposed to do? Do this? I, I'm not sitting here bitching about it, am I? You are. Right. That's the difference you between me and you. You're a fucking baby. Because you start... You are such a baby! Grow the fuck up, you Johnny! you physical fights? I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did, so I had because, to get the fuck out of there. Yes, you did. So you did the right thing, the big thing. The, you know what? You are admirable. Mr. Depp, could you please explain to the jury what they just heard on those audio recordings? Um... What, what was just played on the audio recordings was um, very much the tone and the aggression and the attitude um, and the need for a fight from Ms. Herb. That was, I don't know if that was some need for attention, but um, I don't, it, that, 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 was, that was a sound that I had gotten very used to. The, the squabbling, the, the, you know, the, the raising of the voice to, to essentially excommunicate anything that I had to say about uh, the situation. Um, but then, uh, and I, I do remember the, <clears throat> that incident. I believe that, that that's from the, um, when I was, um, I was in the bathroom and I, I was in fact taking a shower and uh, th this was in penthouse three and she came banging on the door banging on the door banging on the door i didn't answer i was in the shower i couldn't deal with it i didn't want to deal with any more of uh of that oh, the sarcastic demeaning um, aggressive, violent, toxic 
spew. Uh, and so I was taking a shower and I didn't want to answer the door. She kept banging. And then I finally got out of the shower and I opened the bathroom door about just that that much just so I could have a a good hold on the door uh, in case she tried to burst in and I was right she did uh, she tried to, she was bathroom doors go in uh, she was pushing her all her weight on the door trying to get in and I was pushing back because I, I didn't want to let her in because I didn't obviously didn't want the confrontation. She was not in the best of moods. You can you can hear. Uh, so when I was pushing the bathroom door, trying to close it, and was almost closed, she suddenly kind of yelped in in pain. And she, she screamed out, ow, my toes or my foot or something. And so in that second, I thought possibly her, her, her foot had gotten caught under the door, which would, of course, not feel great on the foot or the toes. So I thought she was maybe injured. So I, I knelt down to have a look. The, the door was still, it was, it was still pretty well about that much open. And when I knelt down uh, on my hands and knees to look at her foot to see the injury, um, she kicked uh, the bathroom door uh, into my head. It, so it, it um, yeah, she kicked the bathroom door into my head, and uh, I was I was completely taken aback by such a, 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 a corrosive, horrific move. So I stood up, and I believe I I stood up, and I, at the, but but this at this point the door was open, I stood up and I said, I think I said, I think I said, what the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? And um, the next move was just a bang, it just, uh, she clocked me in the jaw. And uh, that was another shocker. How so long she, after that did you start recording? Sorry? How long after that did you start recording that audio recording that we just heard? That, that, that audio recording was about her uh, trying to make less of what had happened. In fact, trying to make less of what had happened by repeating some story to me that didn't make any sense, and it certainly didn't make any sense since I was there and I was the target. Um, so I wanted some confirmation from someone with some semblance of a, uh, a mind that could understand what was happening. Uh, I wanted Mr. McGibbon to come up, and I asked her to tell him what had just happened. And her answer was essentially, I don't know what he's talking about. Nothing happened. He's fine. And um, once again, uh, I told Mr. McGivern, time to uh, leave the premises. <clears throat> Mr. Depp, I'd like to show you now what's been marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit 162. Okay.
can take those down. Thank you. Um, could you pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 92, please? Mr. Depp, what is this a picture of? Uh, that's that is a <clears throat> that's a photograph of uh, the blade of a of an old like a Bowie knife. Um, that's the photograph of the blade with an inscription on it to me from Ms. Hurd, who at the time I referred to as uh, Slim. Um, Your Honor, we'd like to move um, exhibit um, 90, plaintiff's exhibit 92 into evidence. Moved. No objection. Mr. Dub, what does it say on this knife? Hasta la muerte. And what does that mean? Until death. And then what does it say after that? X, X, slim. And who is slim? Ms. Hurd. When did Ms. Hurd give you this knife? I, well, it was a present from Ms. Hurd. I, I believe it was sort of around 2015. Could we please take this down and pull up plaintiff's exhibit 93? 93? 93, yes. Mr. Duck, what is this a photograph of? That's the um, knife in full view. That's the full um, side of that knife. Uh, we plaintiffs would move plaintiffs exhibit 93 into evidence as well. Okay. All right, 93 in evidence. You can publish the jury. Mr. Duck, do you recall the occasion on which Ms. Hurd gave you this knife? Uh, I, I, d I don't recall exactly the occasion, whether it was uh, m my birthday of 2015 or if it was a Christmas gift. Um, you can take this down, please. Thank you. Um, Mr. Depp, I'd now like to show you what's been marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit 65. And I believe this has already been offered into evidence. Yes. If so, if we could please publish to the jury. Thank you. Mr. Depp, what's reflected in these photographs? Um, there were some scratches. Um, I, uh, another altercation, and there were some Ms. Hurd had uh, come at me with uh, her nails or hand scratch, scratching at me. And who took these photographs of you? Once again, I believe this was Mr. Pett, Sean Pett. And when were these photographs taken? Uh, uh, seems to be Christmas, or ten, 10 days before Christmas, the 15th of uh, December, 2015. Mr. Depp, do you remember what led to um, you having these scratches on your face? This was... Um, Yet again, another confrontation where um, as was my 
regular practice, there had been an altercation. She 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 was um, <clears throat> she had some rage issue with me, and um, I remember that I was trying to go to my corner, as it were, which is I went to, I was going into my office in, in the in penthouse three, which is upstairs. And as I was approaching the door to my office, um, Ms. Heard ran out of the master bedroom, our, our bedroom, and uh, started uh, just throwing wild punches at, uh, at, at me, at the back of my head, at the side of my head, at my, anything that she could connect with. And um, I had to, uh, I, I would have to show you uh, sort of the, how I tried to avoid the uh, attack, if it's, if it's all right. Yes, know? yes, sir. If, if, if I'm walking this way to the door of my office, to the bedroom, door is where you are. I, I'd walked across the, the mezzanine there, and, and um, as I'm approaching the door, suddenly I'm just getting cl clobbered from behind, and, and one's natural primal instinct is to, is to kind of duck and cover. So I ducked and covered, but they didn't stop. So I, I came up this, this like this, um, sort of protecting my face, but at the same time, with her arms swinging wildly, I, uh, I put my arms out and I, and I was able to get her into a, uh, like a maybe a bear hug or something, just to, to stop her from hitting me anymore. Um, and while holding her in that position, uh, she was still trying to, you know, she had her legs, she had her, she could kick, she could, you know, she could knee me. And she, uh, so she, she was still um, jumping, you know, kind of very angry, very animated. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, it was unpleasant. What, ha what happened at the end of that situation? Because of the grabbing of the arms and, and, and holding them to her side, so that I didn't receive any more blows. Um, and, and she was still fighting. I believe there was some kind of contact with our, our heads, our foreheads, as would happen if you're trying to uh, calm someone like that. Um, and then, that was when she uh, accused me of headbutting her, uh, of, of, of giving her a, a headbutt and uh, breaking her nose. But um, there was there was no blood. There was no. I, I didn't hit her nose. I, if there was anything at all, it was a. It, it was a bump of, uh, well, I'm trying to restrain her. She's trying to get out of it. There's going to be some contact here and there, accidental contact, but not a headbutt. How did you uh, escape this altercation? After she'd made the remark about the fact that I 
headbutted her, which which was just impossible. Um, she she split. She she huffed off. I, I let her go. She huffed away, and she was gone for about seven or eight minutes. And then when she came back, I was in. The, I was, then I was in the bedroom of Penthouse 3, our bedroom, and then she came back about seven or eight minutes later, and she had a Kleenex or a tissue to her nose, and, um, and she, then she pulled it away from her nose and she showed it to me, and there was red, there was indeed like red color on the on the tissue, but me, I know that there was no connection to her nose. N no part of my body made connection to her nose or eyes or anything like that. So she said, uh, she took it away and she showed it to me. She said, way to go, Johnny, you broke my nose. You broke my nose. And I knew I hadn't, so I said, in, you go into sort of placation mode, which is, oh my God, let me see, are you okay? What happened? Let me, let me see. And she wouldn't let me see anything. And so I just tried to calm the situation as best I could. Um, all the while, I was waiting for her um, to dispense with that Kleenex because I didn't trust it. And so I waited and went. She dropped it into the waste basket in her bathroom, <clears throat> or in our bathroom, and uh, left the room. Went somewhere downstairs, I think, I don't know. And then I pulled the Kleenex out of the, out of the trash uh, bin. And I inspected it pretty closely and realized that it was nail polish. It was nail varnish or polish. <clears throat> Mr. Depp, shortly after December 15th, 2015, where did you and Miss Heard go for the holidays? Um, we, there was, it was, uh, had been planned for a while that we would be going to the island, and we would be going to the island with my um, my kids, um, Lily Rose and Jack, and Lily Rose's boyfriend at the time. Uh, and and um, uh, there, there, uh, there there's a friend of Amber's called uh, Alice Temperley, I believe her name was, is, and her boyfriend, Greg Williams, who's a, a, a very well-known photographer and a, a both very nice people and their kids were going to, she, she told me they were going to be coming to, to the island and I thought, okay, great. Um, and so, yeah, that's, 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 so that's where we went for the holidays. And what happened on the island in December 2015? Yeah, it many things. Um, Was there any violence? by Miss Heard against you? Oh, yes, there, were, there, were, there was, uh, there were a couple of incidents that were, again, just each time the, one of these incidents would occur, it, it seemed to get worse and worse, that is to say, as opposed to fists or anything like that. Um, I'd set up on the, on the back porch of the house, I'd set up an area um, with a, an easel and oil paints and a, a can of mineral spirits, linseed oil, brushes, everything so she wanted to paint. So I had set it up for uh, and, and for some, and again, 
I remember I was sitting at the table where most of the uh, paint brushes and the can and all that stuff was. And uh, the argument, again, escalated, 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 and she simply reached down and grabbed a can of the can of mineral spirits and uh, and uh, chucked it at my face. She threw it at my face, and it it, uh, it 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 struck me right at the bridge of the nose, sort of the forehead bridge of the nose area. And uh, it hurt. Who else was around when this happened? Well, thankfully, my children and uh, Lily Rose's boyfriend were over towards the cafe. Um, I, I, at that point, I didn't know that anyone else had uh, was around or had witnessed anything. Uh, I thought it was just Amber and I, but apparently um, the, 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 there are four staff who, who, who work on the island. I, I don't think it's hearsay. I don't think I need your statements yet. Just, you can go ahead and continue your answer, sir. Okay. Um, um, Sorry, this the staff that work on your island, Mr. Depp? Yeah. So that there are indeed four staff who work on, on the island and live there uh, all year round, um, who take care of everything. And uh, two of them happened to be in that area and witnessed the uh, uh, violence. How, how sustained those two. Unless you can lay a foundation, how he would know Certainly. that if it was not hearsay. Mr. Depp, how do you know that these staff members witnessed part of this altercation? These people, as I said, there's they, they're, they're staff on the island, though I consider them family and very dear to me. And uh, I, I believe it's, it is mutual. I've known them a very long time. Um, they were visibly, um, they were visibly shaken by what they'd witnessed. Objection. Again, if you can lay foundation, if he saw them there, or if this is something Mr. They Depp, them. did you see any of these individuals shortly after you had this altercation with Ms. Hurd? No, that's not the, that's not the proper. Were they, did he see them actually there? If he didn't, if it's something they told him, then it's hearsay. Mr. Depp, did you see any of your staff members at the house when you and Ms. Hurd had that altercation? Once Ms. Hurd had stormed off, um, I sort of sat there dazed and confused for a few minutes, and then I walked around the house, and I saw Tara and... That's fine. All right, I'll sustain the objection and move on. You mentioned Tara. Who's Tara? Tara is the manager of the island. Mr. Depp, I'd like to discuss April 2016 now. Um, <sighs> when, is, when is Ms. Hurd's birthday? 22nd of April. And in 2016, how was Ms. Hurd celebrating her birthday? Um, we'd set up a, a dinner for her, which was, she wanted to have a dinner um, with her, with all her friends and uh, Josh, um, Drew, um, Rocky's, Rocky's boyfriend, who uh, was some sort of chef, uh, told, uh, he asked her what she would like for him to cook. That's hearsay, I guess. I guess. Okay. I'm not if the sheriff's offered for the truth of the matter asserted. He, he got it. Okay, all right, well then. I'm learning. There you go. 
Uh, Let me put it a different way. <laughs> Mr. Drew, who was a chef, which I don't believe is hearsay, uh, Mr. Drew had made Mexican food Ms. Hurd's favorite. Is that better? And, and what were you doing that day before Ms. Hurd's birthday celebration? Um, I had been in a room uh, for many, many hours with uh, a group of a group of accountants, uh, new accountants, and they were going through uh, uh, essentially the situation that I was in financially, which was. Uh, um, a, a real shock to me. I, I had no idea, and I know this sounds ridiculous, but I prefer to think of the work as opposed to how much I'm getting paid. So I, I had no idea how much money I'd made. I, I, I just didn't. I just figured if I was working, it was money so everything would be all right. Um, they informed me that uh, I had been, um, well, that, uh, quite, quite a, a, an inordinate amount of, sum of money had been, um, was gone. It had uh, disappeared and uh, after having worked 30-something years in the industry, um, I'm sorry, I could hear Ms. Brett. No, you're, you're oh, fine. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was pretty shocked at, 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 at where um, I was to learn I, 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 I was exactly financially. And uh, it was a very long meeting. And I knew, of course, that Ms. Hurd's birthday dinner was to start at, I believe, 8.30. And uh, I texted her a number of times uh, from the meeting saying, this is, this is uh, probably going to go long. And I think I might be a little late. I'm sorry. But it's you know important, and I'm I'm I, I'm going to be a bit late for the dinner, and I apologized all over the place, and <clears throat> so when I left um, and picked up something at the house, which I believe was her gift, um, on the way downtown. I received a text from Ms. Hurd asking me to bring, um, asked if I could bring uh, some wine and some weed. And I texted back, sure. And then by the time I got to, uh, arrived at Penthouse 5, for the party, I was about an hour and 40 minutes late, maybe, something like that. Before you arrived, how many drinks had you had? Oh, I think I'd had a glass of wine with, there was, there was one bottle of wine that uh, Ed White had brought to the meeting that <clears throat> we, between I don't know how many, five or six of us, we had a, we, we had a glass of wine could you tell the jury who Ed White is? Oh, yeah, sorry. Ed White was my, at the time, he was my um, uh, new business manager. Um, and he was quite a, um, st he was quite a professional, you know, nearly forensic uh, uh, business manager. And he had shown me things that, uh, that uh, from 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 my former business managers were quite Jack disturbing. You're saying? I, I believe he said he showed him. 
Uh, yes, he sh uh, yes, I looked at papers. Maybe they're hearsay papers. I don't know. No, I, I believe he was being shown financial documents. All right. All right. So, I'll, well, I'll say no to any hearsay that might be understood. All right, next question. Um, Mr. Depp, when you arrived at the party, how did Ms. Hurd greet you, if at all? Very cold. What did she say to you? Not much. Not much, except occasionally she would tear herself from the conversation that she was in just to lean towards me. I was, I was sitting to, <clears throat> to her right, and I would get a quick earful of I can't believe you, I can't believe you've done this to me on my birthday. I can't believe I'm so embarrassed, um, you know, which I found odd because I'd kept her informed all, all, all day. And the last text that I'd received was a request for wine and marijuana. So when I got there and received that uh, attitude, what could I do? Um, so I just made the best best of it and talked to her friends and because uh, they were all her friends except for, I believe, Nurse Aaron. Aaron was there, I believe. What's Aaron's last name? Uh, Aaron Borum, Nurse Aaron, who had the, been the nurse assigned to Ms. Heard. So I just I, I just had conversations with the various people there, her makeup artist, um, Melanie Iglesias was there with her fella, and uh, I remember speaking French with them. Um, and um, I didn't really eat, <laughs> wasn't feeling it. Did you have any drinks at the once you arrived at the birthday party? Uh, uh, wine. How many glasses? Uh, I don't. Maybe two. Maybe because two, two, they were like large. You know, the large sort of um, Bordeaux glasses. So yeah, maybe two two glasses of wine. By the time it started to uh, wind down. How many? Um how many drinks did you observe Ms. Hurd consume after you arrived at the party? I, I really couldn't say because I, 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 all I saw was just, there was, she had, she was drinking wine. And did it seem to you that she had been drinking wine prior to your arrival? Um, I was sure, since I was an hour and 40 minutes late, that Ms. Hurd was well into the wine before I got there, yes, certainly. How did the party come to an end? Uh, um, it was kind of, you know, one person would say, well, I better get out of here, and then two more couples or two more people would say, yeah, time to go. And then it just uh, wound down. There was uh, Mr. Drew, Miss Pennington, um, Whitney, possibly Whitney. Um, and that was about it, it was sort of left <clears throat> there. And what happened after the guests left the party? Um, she was free to uh, to commence with the uh, the usual um, verbal barrage, and I at that point there was so much in my head from the meeting. I thought it was a bit much 
that Ms. Hurd had, I'm sorry, it, it seemed quite bratish, it seemed quite childish that Ms. Hurd was holding uh, such a grudge against me for having been late to her 30th birthday party when she knew very well, she was well informed that I was in a, an intense meeting that had a lot to do with not just my life and my future, but my children's and um, what would, I didn't know what was gonna happen t to, I didn't know what was gonna happen. I didn't know if houses were gonna start going away. I didn't, so um, <clears throat> it felt, it, 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 I'm sure, of course, she felt something, but it felt unfair. It felt small, comparatively, if your loved one or your husband uh, uh, has had some very serious issues brought before him. Um, so uh, when she engaged in her normal kind of banter of uh, trying to poke at me and get me to react. I literally just got into, I got into bed. Um, I remember the television was on and I, and I was reading and I suppose uh, Ms. Hurd was down in her area taking off her makeup and changing into sleep clothes, whatever. And uh, she entered the bedroom <clears throat> while I was laying on my side of the bed, reading. And she was still rattling off all the wrongs I'd uh, done to her in that particular day. and and how unreliable I am and uh, what a, you know, what a horrible person I was. Um, and I, and I did not, I did not engage verbally nothing. I sat there or laid there reading my book. And when that, when she didn't get a jump out of me or a jolt out of me, she got out of bed, she walked around the bed she came to my side, and uh, again, you know, you, you, you've got uh, you've got a person who is uh, throwing multiple shots at your at your face, at your head, at your neck, at your at anything she could hit. So I I got up out of bed. And I grabbed her by the shoulders and I sat her down on the bed. <clears throat> and I said, I'm leaving. Please don't get off the bed. Please don't follow me. Please don't try and stop me. I'm leaving. And she got up off the bed and she squared off at me in the doorway of our bedroom. And I said, what do, you, what do you want to do, hit me again? Would you like to hit me again? And I said, go ahead, hit me. Bam. And then I just said, did that, is that what you wanted? Would you like another? Bam. There's the second one. And I said, good, now you're done. Grabbed her by the shoulders, walked her to the bed, sat her down and said, don't follow me, leave me alone, I'm out, I'm gone. I went, I grabbed a few things and I got out immediately and I went to um, my other house on Sweetser, 
as Ms. Hurd was, she was leaving the following day for uh, Coachella, which is a, a, a it's a Coachella is like a, it's a big event, a concert, you know, many, many bands and um, yeah, out in the desert. She, she, she and her friends were going to Coachella for the weekend and um, that was it, that was, that was it. Mr. Depp, after April 21st, 2016, when was the next time that you actually saw Ms. Hurd in person? I left Ms. Hurd, well, I left Penthouse 3. I left at 4.30 in the morning uh, on, it was actually April, it was actually her birthday. It was 4.30 4 in the morning, April 22nd, and that's when I left. And from that moment on, I did not see Ms. Hurd until May 21st. And why was that? Um, I had received some news that was as absurd and grotesque and cruel. Um, and then I was shown a picture of what the problem was. I had gone to Mr. Beck and said, uh, she's, in Coachella, she's at Coachella. I think it's a good time to go downtown so that I can get some of my things, you know, and uh, get them out of there, especially the things that were uh, uh, precious to me, you know, children things, things from friends, Brando, Hunter, Thompson, whatever, things that were important to me. And he said, I don't think now's a good time to go. And I thought, it's the perfect time. She's not going to be home for two days. And then he showed me a photograph on his telephone of uh, Objection, Your Honor. Also it's, it's a photograph, Your Honor. As being relayed to him by Mr. Beck. He he says he looked at it on his on his phone. I'll rule the objection as the photograph. What was the photograph of Mr. Depp? It was a, it was a, it was a photograph of the bed, our bed, um, and on my side of the bed, um, was human fecal matter. Um, so I understood why it wasn't a good time to go down there. Um, my initial response to that was, I mean, I laughed. I, I, there, it was so outside. It was so bizarre and so grotesque that I could only laugh. Um, and um, so I did not go down there that day. Mr. Depp, how was your mother's health during this time? Um, not good, not good at all. My mom, my mom was in um, Cedar Sinai Hospital, and uh, she was she was on her way out. She was dying. How she, often were you going to see her during this time? Excuse me. How often were you going to see her during this time? Um, as much as I could under the circumstances. 
um, and uh, when I when I when I did go go and get to see my mom, um, she was pretty much uh, incapable of speech. Her speech had left her. At that time, her she she was she seemed to st she, her eyes were still open and she was she could kind of react with her eyes, but she couldn't speak. And then, not long after that, um, once her eyes closed, she lay there for the duration of her of her life which ended on the 20th of May, um, the, the, the night before I saw Miss Heard for the last time, well, essentially. I'm so sorry, Mr. Depp, but how did your mother's death affect you? As would anyone, I suppose, there was one thing that I couldn't fathom was I, I mean I, I brought my kids to see Betty Sue in the hospital and uh, at that time she was not functioning she was not responsive she, I mean, she, uh, she was alive still she was fighting still inside but she was she was uh, lying in the bed um, and what excuse this uh, analogy but all I could think of was how if if she's conscious of, of if she's conscious of everything that's going on around her but has no ability to speak has no ability to move. Um, I, I knew that the one thing, as far as Betty Sue was concerned, the last thing that she would have wanted was to have ended up lying there on a, what, what it was like, there's my mom lying there on a, deli platter and it was a it was a horrible image but I brought my kids in to say goodbye and we all spoke into her ear and, uh, and then she passed away later so it was uh, it was painful, but there was some side of it too, at least to me, that in, 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 in a way it was, uh, I was happy for her. Why because was that? I, I can't, because I can't imagine Betty Sue or my mom, I can't imagine anyone lying there in quite probably Quite possibly was a, uh, a, a kind of a locked in syndrome. And if she's surrounded by 10 people looking at her lying there in that, on that deli platter, if you will, I was happy for her that she was out of pain, out of frustration, out of. I, I, I was happy that she'd moved. Not happy. I was relieved that she was no longer in that situation. Though, when those you love leave, we're the ones stuck with the uh, with the pain, with the grieving. Um, but but I was glad that my kids got to see her and give her her, 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 
were sent off, I suppose. And um, but it was no, no. It, it 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 opened my eyes quite a lot to a number of things. And what were some of those things that your mother's death opened your eyes to? That life is a bird song. That that what feels like a hundred years is in fact a second, millisecond. Nobody can count those things. You know, so I had made peace with Betty Sue because I understood where she came from and I understood how difficult her childhood was and I understood that she had had not had the uh, proper training or proper teaching or the proper background to to be anything other than what she had been when we were younger I, I forgave her for all that, um, as one would, should. So I was, uh, it opened my eyes to the fact that, 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 that yes, if you try in relationships, whether friendships, whether courtships, whether marriage, whether this, whether that. Try your best to try. If it's not going to work, it's not going to work. And, and, and more importantly, if you're going to get out of it, if you're going to make an end, which I had decided that I, I, I it was somebody had to call it and I decided that I would call Amber and tell her that my mom had had died <clears throat> that day and then I very calmly said look I've, I've made a decision and I think it's the best thing I'm going I'm going to file for divorce, but I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to cite irreconcilable differences. I'm not going to cite uh, any violence. I'm not going to. I'm going to state this. We simply, the two of us, we simply don't want to feel as though we we have a, 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 a collar around each other's neck and a leash attached to it and then this piece of paper that proves that that's true so what I thought was best was we want to end this in love and take the idea of um, ownership ownership of one another out of the picture. And, and that's how I approached Miss Heard um, with that. And uh, so, so why did you go over to the penthouses on May 21st, 2016? Miss Heard had requested uh, that I come over to, to, to have a talk, to explain she wanted to explain things, and, and uh, so I went there. But I, and I also had to wanted to gather up some of those things, you know, precious things that you live with. Um, so, so yeah, so I, I went over there to have a discussion. What I thought would be. Uh, calm understanding. I, thought, I figured she understood 
as well as I did, that, that there was no way back. And I, I also felt that she would understand that um, it was the best thing for both of us. And there were no, uh, there was nothing to, there, there should have been nothing to fight over. It was clear. I told her that I would take care of her and uh, all that. and. Um, and then she <clears throat> she started to she was telling me about the uh, she brought up the situation of the uh, fecal matter on the bed and i uh <laughs> Uh, and she just tried to blame it on the dogs. But why, the do didn't you, why didn't you think it could have been the dogs? The dogs were... The, they're teacup Yorkies. They, they weigh about four pounds each. Um, the photograph that I saw... And, and, uh, I, I mean... I lived with those dogs for many years, um, and so did Hilda Vargas. Um, my, she's a she's a woman who's been with me for thirty plus years, you know, from the very beginning, and she was the one who photographed it. Um, it was clear. She knew the dogs as well as I did. And that, that was not, none of that did not come from a dog. I just didn't. Mr. Depp, could we back up a little bit? Who went over to the penthouses with you on May 21st? I went to the penthouses with Jerry Judge and Sean Bett. And I had asked them on the just in case, please pay particular attention and stay as close to the door, you know, stay at the door, or if you got a split, come back quick, you know, if they went down to the security shack or whatever it was, come, don't, don't linger, get back. Because if you hear anything, if you hear uh, uh, screaming, you got to get in there, so leave the door unlocked and, and spring in there if you hear something. Why did you want them to be able to get into the penthouse quickly if they heard anything? Um, just based on my past experiences with Ms. Erd, when, when you say something that, that she... Uh, either didn't agree with or swore up and down that it was a complete falsity and there was something wrong with me, I'm crazy, and the, you know, the escalation. If, if, if anything was gonna start to escalate, I did not want to be there. So I had them waiting by the door uh, to get in there in case anything went down. So when you walked into the penthouse, what did you see? When I first walked into the penthouses, you, you, you walk in and then make a left, uh, and then you're in the kitchen area, and then beyond that was the living room. Um, uh, I saw Miss Heard uh, sitting there on the couch. Um, And I went over to talk. I went and sat down on the couch. She was sitting on, the couch was kind of a, you know, a square or a half square, you know. She was sitting on one side of the couch. I was sitting on the other. She, that's when she was trying to explain a few things about Coachella and then the fecal, uh, delivery um, 
and say, saying that it was the dogs. And I, I could, I'm sorry, I could not agree with her. I'd lived with those dogs. I picked up their fun. It was not the dogs. And so what happened was I called, I said, let's call Kevin Murphy. Who's who Kevin had, Murphy? Kevin Murphy had been, he was, he was in Los Angeles. He was, he was uh, the, um, the house manager uh, over um, the places in West Hollywood. And he was also um, taking care of the, the penthouses downtown if any work needed to be done or this or that and he would schedule the the girls who would come in the the ladies like hilda to do their work <clears throat> and uh, he'd had a conversation with ms hurd here's your honor Let's move beyond the All conversation right, that on. Kevin Soon. Murphy had with Ms. Hurd. Um, so after you called Kevin Murphy, what happened? I asked Kevin if Amber and he had spoken about the incident. He said, yes, they had. Okay, and um, it appears that Ms. Hurd had told... Your say, Your Honor. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, uh, this is a, uh, apparently a statement by Ms. Hurd. Uh, that, he that he heard Kevin Murphy. That's, that's what the testimony is. All right, if you want to reframe okay. that, that's fine. Okay. After you hung... When did you hang up the phone with Kevin Murphy? Um, right about the time that Ms. Hurd was screaming obscenities at him and calling him a liar and that he was a scumbag and I, I told her, I said, listen, don't, don't speak to this man in that way. Do not dis disrespect this man in that way. And then Kevin Murphy just hung up. And so at that point, she was riled, of course. And I went upstairs to gather belongings. When I came back downstairs, she was on the phone with Io Tillett Wright, and they were making a, a wonderful point of just how funny it was that um, I thought that some human being had actually dropped a uh, <clears throat> grumpy pardon the term, onto the bed. And they were yakking, they were yucking it up. They were laughing about the whole thing. And uh, it, 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 it was, it was, you know, it was, a, it, was a, it, it was a tough couple of days. And I really didn't feel like I deserved that kind of treatment and uh, I went over and I said let me talk to her I grabbed the phone and I said to Io you can have her now she's yours she's all yours right and then I took the phone and I just bang like that onto the I mean that side of the couch was eight feet long. The other side of the couch was about six feet long. I flopped it onto the couch, and I was walking towards the uh, kitchen to uh, exit, and then suddenly Rocky Pennington um, ran in uh, to the penthouse and started, you know, leave her alone, Johnny, leave her alone. And I was, I was by the refrigerator at this point. I was 20 feet away. Where was Miss Hurd at that time? She was still sitting on the couch. 
um, and that's when the screaming, you know, the um, the screaming started with like again, I'm 20 feet away. She's still got Io on the phone. She's got Rocky there. Stop hitting me, Johnny. She's screaming in in her best um, freaked out, upset voice, high pitched. Stop hitting me, stop hitting me. Jerry Judge and Sean Bett entered the room. And as they entered the room, and she was quite surprised to see them, she said, that's the last time you'll ever hit me. That's the last time you'll ever do that to me. And again, I'm, I'm a good 20 feet away by the fridge. Um, and then Jerry said, boss, I think we should just leave. And then we left. That was the last time I saw Miss Heard until, um, until she asked me to break the restraining order. Uh, or not break the restraining order, in, well, I, yeah, break the restraining order and talk to her in July later. Mr. Depp, where did you go after you left the penthouses on May 21st? I went home. To, to which home? Oh, to Sweetser. And then where did you go? Did, where did you go after you were, went home to Sweetser? Um, I was due to, um, I, I, I had to go to, I had to catch a flight to New York um, where we were doing, uh, the, I was, this group, the Hollywood Vampires, <clears throat> we, were, we were about to set out on a two or three month tour of Europe and we, we were rehearsing in New York and then we played one show in New York as a, as a warm up gig and then we were on the plane and we were, uh, we started the, the shows in, in, um, in Europe. And okay. I was on the road from then, which was May, on t through July, uh, August or something. Ms. Myers, this is a good time to take I our was, afternoon break. I was just going to okay. suggest that. Thank good. you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Let's go ahead and take our afternoon break, ladies and gentlemen. Please do not do any outside research and do not discuss the case. Thank you. Take our recess, and Mr. Depp, you know what I'm going to say, right? You're learning, right? Okay, uh, 345? Is that good? Thank you. Thank you. All right.